So then carrying a baby for nine months can take quite a toll on your body, not to mention, of course, delivering the baby when the time comes. And for many women, this is a long, drawn-out process that can have a lasting effect um, on you and your body, and one part of the body in particular. I'll tell you more about this. Emma Seuss is here from Ed Walton, uh, formerly a urology nurse for the NHS. She, she was left with problems after she had her own children, and when she couldn't get the treatment that she needed, she thought, right, I'm going to see what I can do about this, and she has, and she's here at BBC Radio in Oskim now. Hello. Good morning. So what happened then? Talk, talk us through your own experience. Um, well, I've had two children. The first one was a caesarean and the second one was a normal vaginal delivery. Um, and there were a few complications, which a lot of women suffer from, um, resulting in some stitches. Um, and there's some issues that a lot of women have, long labours, difficulty going to the bathroom, difficulty in the bedroom afterwards. Um, and getting the help after that was quite difficult, um, which is a challenge for a lot of women. It's not a new thing. Um, well, we've got a great NHS, but post baby, sometimes it can be difficult to go through your GP to get to the right person for some help. Um, now, I was quite lucky in terms of the fact that I, I knew who to speak to and, and how to get help. Um, and to cut a very long story short, I happened to meet a wonderful um, women's physio who helped me to get better. Um, now, it was quite traumatic to get to that stage. Um, and I'm quite a sensible person, and not every woman has got the, the ability to pipe up when they need help. Um, and it highlighted to me as a nurse as well as, as a, a mum that this isn't a, a problem that, that just goes away without any intervention. Mm. Um, but it is difficult to, to speak to your GP in 10-minute slots that you sometimes have if you look gay about difficulties you may be having with your relationship or what's happening in the bedroom or the bathroom. Right. Because um, these are quite embarrassing subjects in lots of uh, ways, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're perceived to be that way. Um, although we're in 2017, it can be quite challenging um, to see women as... As a sexual being, shall mm. we say, um, and that that's natural to speak about. You know, ladies might speak with their friends about it, but not necessarily to a healthcare practitioner because we're not actually broken. There's not a problem, but sometimes women do need to explore around what's happened to them physically after they've had a baby, and also what's going on within their relationships with other people as well. Yeah, well, it's important at the end of the day. It is. Um, I just just wonder as well with your own experience then, Emma, there you are as as a new mum, but also having worked as a nurse, that obviously gives you some extra insight, yes. it, doesn't it, yeah. into what, what is happening. So I, I just wonder if that makes you even more attuned to what is going on. It must does. do. It does. The, the biggest thing we've found with what we do with our business is that women need to talk to explore those things. A lot of women come to us because, is it normal? Do I look normal? Is it okay to feel this way? Can it be fixed? Because there's very little follow-up beyond that initial few weeks with a health visitor and midwife and GP. Mm. Um, and some of these issues don't present until quite a few years down the line as well. And women can be quite frightened as to what's happening to them. Um, and sometimes just need a bit of reassurance. Yeah. So it's probably worth explaining and exploring a little bit more about what some of these physical effects are can be and we should you know we always have to put out a little bit of a yep. a, a warning at this point that you know we might be talking about some some particular bits of biology for want of a better expression but we're going to do this because it does affect a lot of people so what kind of effects can it have well, there's the mechanical incidents of having a baby so tears for example some people have simple tears some people have a complex a third or fourth degree tears where they will tear through the vagina into the back wall there can be issues with prolapses a few years down the line um, sexual function so enjoyment satisfaction difficulty and pain without going into it too much at this time of day um, and then we look at long term there are physical changes with the aging process that women go through so as we go into menopause we have things like estrogen levels diminishing which have an effect on the actual structures themselves which can also be compounded by the fact that they may have had previous surgery as well things like presenting complaints typically will be incontinence difficulty in the bedroom in terms of satisfaction and, and all the other things that go with that um difficulty in relationships relating to being able to communicate with their partner as to what's happening with their body and also the fear and the stigma around all of that as well yeah, yeah. 
again, uh, as we mentioned before, can be quite a tricky. It would be one thing having a conversation with your partner about mm. all of that, let alone someone who's effectively a stranger. Yeah. How would you advise someone to broach that first conversation? Well, one of the things that we've done with the business is that we have made it accessible to all of our women in terms of there is we don't have any salespeople. So everything is done. Your first port of contact is a nurse. So you will speak to a nurse. If you pick the phone up now, you will speak to a nurse. So some people are quite open and they want to speak. Before a patient will come to our clinic, they will have filled in all of their documentation online. So questions that are quite challenging to ask and be asked are already broached. So the patient will often know when they arrive through our door that there is an open forum. So we're asking about particular things in the bedroom, particular things in the bathroom, so that when the patient comes, they know that I can talk about these things. It's not going to be embarrassing. I've not got to try and find out if that's okay to talk about that. Um, We'll have all of that information beforehand and nurses with all sorts of different backgrounds in our network. So we've got midwives, we've got sexual health experts, we've got uh, genitourinary medicine, we've got urology. Um, And we make sure that the patients based on that are directed to the most suitable specialists for their needs. We'll talk more about um, what you've actually done on the business side of things in just a few moments' time. This might be something you yourself can relate to. It's BBC Radio, Nottingham, I'm Mark Dennison, and uh, with me this morning, Emma Seuss is here from Ed Walton, former NHS urology nurse who has developed her own treatment. So this is for women who are left with various problems, uh, intimate problems in particular, after childbirth. Um, Just to sort of recap a little bit then, Emma, would you say this is more about bathroom problems or bedroom problems? Combination. They often go hand in hand. Right. And how soon after childbirth would women generally start to notice some of these things? It varies. I mean, some of those issues are age-related as well, so we've got to factor into that. Um, but we would the earliest we would ever see a patient is at least 12 weeks after a baby, and that would have to be with a nurse directly, make sure that they've had no complications as such. Um, but at any point, a woman can present. I mean, our average age is between 40 to 45. Right. So upwards. quite often this would be a, quite a bit further down yeah. the track then. Yeah. And you were just telling me as well that sometimes the issue is that you might mention this to a medical expert and they might say something like, oh, it's because you've had a baby. Oh, it's because you go through menopause. Hmm. And it's kind of normalised things. A, a lot of the medical side of things is looking for problem solving. So are you functional at the moment? So can you go to the bathroom? Can you partake in intercourse? And if you sort of tick those boxes, it's, OK, we Those are things that you live with. But often women need to explore sort of the sexuality side of things and their feelings. We also get a lot of women sort of in the sort of the middle age bracket, for want of a better term, who are venturing onto new adventures and looking for a bit of confidence. So they may have lost a partner or they may be moving into a new journey. Um, They may have new symptoms present and they're alarmed that is this this a health problem? Mm. Um, And just seeking that advice, really. Right. Um, so let's come on to what you actually do then. What is it? <laughs> How long have we got? <laughs> so we initially started out with um, our new V vaginal tightening treatment. So we, th- this is something that's not new. It's been around for a while. Um, and it became very apparent very quickly that tightening the vagina is a small part of, of the, the sexuality side of things and that women were presenting with very complex issues sometimes relating to menopause, sometimes relating to illness. And what we've done is we've, we've developed a clinic network with a group of nurses that have got experiences far and wide. So we have, in our network, we have midwives, sexual health specialists, uh, genitourinary medicine, and so on and so forth. Um, because when women come to us, they were telling us that there is nowhere for me to get a one-stop shop help from. I have to go to my GP or I have to go to my aesthetic practitioner or I have to go to my midwife or my practice nurse. And we found very quickly that there was a real need for women to have time. And what we decided to do was to develop from the vaginal tightening treatment to expand into things like menopause, health, um, sexual health, for example. You know, STI rates are going through the roof in the over 50s. You know, that's well documented now. Um, we did a survey. We've done 400 patients' treatments uh, across the board in the last year across the six clinics that we've got. 
And out of those 400, we did a survey and the things that cropped up over and over were that having a private place to speak, having a nurse face to face at the end of the phone was an important thing. Um, having all female staff, and that's quite a big thing for ladies to be able to speak to a woman about women's things because um, it helps if you have the, the equipment to be able to understand how it feels. Um, also that people were finding it difficult to access a service that suited them. Now we can refer onwards if we need to into traditional mainstream uh, NHS medicine, but we've also got enough uh, expertise within our network to be able to offer that to patients right. as well. And the tightening itself, what would that be? A general anaesthetic, local? No, it's a very simple procedure. Um, it involves the use of a, a, a special laser. And what happens, um, when we hit the age of golden age of 27, Mother Nature starts to withdraw a few services. So we start to decline, so to speak. Um, so things like collagen production will slow down. And this is why we start to get loosened tissue as well as the mechanics of having a baby. Um, the only way to stimulate new collagen is to produce a, an injury, a controlled injury. So if you think, for example, I injured you now, you would get red, it would get bruised, it would be swollen. And you would, if it was a small injury, you wouldn't get a scar because there's enough resource around it to fix it. So in essence, what we do is... Um, we would insert the laser into the vagina whilst the patient's awake, very little discomfort. We cause superficial micro injuries, and the result of which, long term, is that you produce new collagen, which causes the tightening effect as well. Um, it also increases blood supply to that area, which is why a lot of our women will say things like sexual gratification is improved. Um, in terms of urinary incontinence, which is one of the main presenter complaints a lot of our women have, um, a full assessment of things like their pelvic floor um, ability and their tone is quite important because a lot of women don't actually do those exercises correctly and the only way for a nurse to make that assessment is to actually feel the muscles as the patient contracts them. So a little bit like when your personal trainer is with you at the gym and they watch you lift a weight and tell you the technique, the same sort of thing. But the only way that can happen is if a patient is being examined at the time. Right. I'm guessing this is private then. This isn't yes, on the NHS. it is. And how much would something like that ballpark figure? Um, well, we've priced it so it's more available. There are other clinics out there that do similar types of treatment that charge quite a lot. Um, and we didn't feel that that was acceptable for, for, for women um, across the board because 95 to 98% of us have issues. Um, for a single treatment, we charge £499. The recommended gold standard in literature, research and clinical data going back over 20 years is that three treatments is a, is a good starting point with maintenance, obviously we're still ageing, um, and we'd price that at 995 I was going to ask you about the whole thing of, you know, is this just a one magic kind of treatment and everything is fine? It sounds like you have to have more than one then. Typically, each woman is different, and we leave it up to women to decide themselves based on their responses. Um, the treatment itself is a small part of what's going on. The talking side of it is also a big thing because psychosexual issues are also a big issue and connecting body and mind is a really important thing and that's where the talking therapists as well as the laser have come into that and supporting ladies as they transition through different phases so a woman in her 20s to 30s has got very different issues to somebody who's approaching menopause going through or is post-menopausal mm. um, and we need to be able to support women along that journey with all our services. Very interesting. Thank you for coming in and explaining more. Sandra Seuss from Ed Walton on BBC Radio Nottingham with her own story and what she's doing now as well. 